All right, so uh, what I have here today is I'm going to record a video of uh, milling of my latest project on this Glock 19 here for a customer. Uh, so overall, what we're going to do for the build is we're going to put a pocket on each side and that's 15,000 steep, and that's what you're seeing here. Uh, additionally, we're going to do vertical front slide serrations to match the uh, rear. We're going to do a 45 degree chamfer on each of the edges, mill the top for uh, shield RMSC, and we'll do that in lieu of the rear dovetail. So we're going to get rid of the rear sight uh, because the shield optics do have a rear sight built into them. It's a great feature of that. Uh, we can additionally mill the rear uh or sorry the rear dovetail we can place that forward of the optic uh, or just keep it where it is and, and mill the optic right in front of it it's really up to the end user um, we're going to put two uh, larger pockets uh, or sorry uh, windows in the sides as well as one up top and do some custom engraving something a little bit unique the customer wanted that you'll see uh, on the other side here when we get there um, so right now uh, we're going through and we did a 2D adaptive that you just saw with this 1 8 inch Lakeshore Carbide end mill. Uh, almost all the end mills you're going to see here are going to be from Carl over at Lakeshore Carbide. I really just don't see a need to go to another supplier. Uh, he's been really great to me and, and one thing I can say is that Lakeshore's customer service is the best that I've, I've experienced so far with my limited experience that I've had uh, buying end mills. So uh, really, if you get a chance, uh, shoot Carl an email or call and he's more than willing to answer questions if you have any he helped me out immensely from stopping breaking and mills that uh, I was having an issue with so uh, he's really great um, so with all these bigger flat surfaces uh, um, at this point I'm going through and entirely doing those with these 1 8 inch end mills uh, I could obviously come through with a quarter inch or bigger end mill and do a roughing strategy and then come back and just finish them with this 1 8 uh, on this horizontal that you just saw but uh, right now I'm getting great results and I don't mind the extra you know 10 minutes or so per side that it's taking to do it this way because really most of the time I just hit run and I go upstairs and make a sandwich or something. But um, maybe we'll we'll move and we'll change that out to do a bigger end mill first if I want to save some time. Um, additionally, talking about time savings, uh, something that I've been doing for the last couple dozen uh, slides that I've made is what you're seeing right here is a helical ramp all the way to the bottom of that pocket. Um, so that helical ramp takes about two and a half minutes uh, just to get the full depth and it's just kind of a waste of time and good carbide so uh, what i'm going to do in the future is i bought a solid carbide end mill that's or sorry a solid carbide drill that's a little bit oversized uh, over an eighth of an inch and i'm just going to poke a hole through uh, and then just uh, plunge down at, at full rapid speed of 160 inches a minute to the bottom of that hole and then start this 2D adapter that you see here. It takes me about 45 seconds to do a tool change um, so that's that's some time savings but really it's just kind of a, a waste of good carbide uh, on an end mill. I don't need to heel glue all the way down when I can remove material a lot quicker just poking a hole through with a drill. Um, so yeah, like all my pockets and everything, you're going to see here a 2D adaptive uh, made with Fusion 360, and then I'll come back and I'll do a contour path just to clean up that uh, edge and get rid of so those trichoidal uh, tool paths like this adaptive you're watching um, does leave little cusps and not a great surface finish, so I never use those as a finishing uh, strategy. So right here we're plunging down, and then we're going through and just cleaning up that wall. Uh, after this, we're going to swap over to the 45 degree chamfer, or sorry, uh, the 732nds um, end mill, and I'm just going to do a full um, plunge, or sorry, a full uh, slot here. So these are only 30 thousandths deep, which is uh, plenty easy to handle for a, a carbide 732nds end mill. Uh, we're going at about an, uh, 1 thousandths per tooth, which is about 11 inches per minute. Uh, with this four fluid end mill and, and it handles it very well so uh, I'm definitely going to continue on in the past I was doing these with a 1 16th end mill and going through and you can imagine how long it took to rough out that pocket and it just really wasn't worth it and 1 16th end mills are pretty fragile so I'll avoid using those if I don't have to um, now we're going to go to that 90 degree included four fluid end mill 
uh, and do two passes, so one on each side, and uh, pardon me, I'm not used to filming on the mill, so you'll see the coolant nozzle just ran into the GoPro mount, and I'm just readjusting it, I paused the program. Um, so because this is unsupported machining, it only hangs out about an inch on the edge of each uh, side in this vise, but uh, it does give you a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of chatter, which uh, will show up in the surface finish. So I go back through and I do a, a skim pass, basically just a, a spring pass to uh, clean up that surface finish and it comes out great. So uh, I'll pan back now and let you watch some of the uh, aftermath while it's still in the mill and then when uh, I finish that I'll just throw in a couple pictures and these pictures will be the uh, pre sandblasting but I will show some sandblasting pictures in there as well uh, hope you liked it I'll, I'll let you just watch some machining for a minute or two uh, and then I'll come back and we'll throw up a couple video or a couple pictures of the finished products uh, and then at the end I'll throw in a video of a different project that I finish uh, that I think you'll like too all right thanks Right. some uh, milling of the left side of the gun. Uh, here you see that a uh, bit of a unique engraving. I don't know the backstory here, but uh, hey, if you want a sperm whale on the side of your Glock, I'll do that for you. So uh, here it is. I think it came out pretty good. Uh, and I'll show some final pictures of after sandblasting and then uh, after Cerakote as well. Uh, I did realize that I forgot to uh, take any video of milling that RMS cut on the top of the slide, so I'll throw in here some video of uh, Glock 17 project that I did where I milled the same uh, RMSC. I'll actually th uh, throw in a video at the end of that uh, Glock 17 and FD. I think it came out pretty great. So uh, here's that slide or the optic milling, and then I'll come back with uh, some final thoughts. Thanks. <laughs> So uh, that was that RMS uh, or RMS uh, on that one, uh, same as this Glock 19. And here you got some pictures of uh, that was sandblasted. And here's the final product. So I uh, did it in the graphite black. I think that uh, color looks great. It matches stock just about as close as you can get. Um, and I really am happy with how the whole build came out. So uh, that titanium nitride barrel really shows through those ports. 
uh, on the sides and as well as that big one on the top uh, that I unfortunately didn't take a picture of. Um, so yeah, I, I really am happy with it. If uh, you're interested in getting something done, shoot me a message. Um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, additionally, so I'm going to add on the end here, um, just a, a couple days ago I finished a Glock 17. Uh, it was actually a Glock 22 converted to 9mm, so that's what you have here. Um, so this is a Glock 17 done in flat dark earth. Uh, the same optics, so that's the Shield RMS, uh, not the C that I use for the single stacks. Um, so uh, I did a window on each side, uh, similar as before. There's multiple step downs for uh, those uh, weight relief cuts you see there, some chevron cuts. Overall, I saved about an ounce and a half on this slide, uh, and that's with the optic mounted to it. It's about an ounce and a half lighter than just a stock slide. Uh, so the 45s all around, uh, just like on the other one, and then some windows. So uh, thanks for watching. See you later.